Hey everyone, welcome to Bald Guy Money. I recently did a video summarizing the performance of gold over the last 15 years, which is how long I've been stacking. And now it's time to discuss the exact same analysis for silver in order to answer the following questions. Number one, is silver really a hedge against inflation? We're going to look at its performance over the last 15 years to answer that. Next is, what if I buy the high price every year of silver versus buying the bottom price every year? What would be the difference in return and performance? And finally, what proof is there that silver will protect you in a financial collapse? I have some proof and am ready to share it with you all in this video. So let's get right into it. And as we go along, I encourage all of you watching out there to add your points of view to the comment section to get the discussion rolling. Because just as I said back in the gold video, I can't stand it when people pull up totally cherry picked numbers and say, don't buy silver. It's a complete loser. It's down 49% since 2011. The S&P 500 is up 276% over the same time period. And the reason these kinds of jabs at silver really drive me crazy is because that is not how you properly analyze the performance of any asset. Any analyst out there trying to sell you that type of narrative, that type of analysis, isn't putting the work in to get to the truth of the matter. Because any of you out there who have been stacking as long as I have fully understand what happened in 2011 to cause the blow off top, not only for gold, but also for silver. And you probably also understand that it's not a reasonable single point of reference upon which to analyze the price of silver. And that's because back in 2010, we had just survived a major recession. That recession was brought on by the American real estate bubble, which was caused by banks making loans to unqualified borrowers. And when those loans started going bad, banks and major investment institutions started failing. And that triggered the Federal Reserve coming in on its white horse, money printer in hand, to save the day. But this revealed major cracks in the structure of the financial market. Fast forward to 2011, we start to see countries defaulting on their debts in Europe, namely Greece. Greece was the big pain point for Europe back in 2011. And to all my Greek viewers out there, I am sending my love because I love Greece. It's rich history and fantastic people. But this crisis put everyone on edge. People were really starting to think that this could be the end of the financial system as we knew it at that time, which caused a massive spike in the price of commodities like gold, silver, and oil. And that data point, although it is important, is not the one we should be basing performance analysis upon because it is an anomaly. Using that particular data point is akin to measuring the stock price of a very solid company like Netflix versus the goofy C-19 highs when people thought we'd be sitting at home in our pajamas for the rest of our lives. It didn't make sense then, and it doesn't make sense now. But that's not to say that there aren't significant differences in how silver has performed since 2011 versus, for example, gold. There are significant differences. And those differences tell us some important things that we need to know when deciding what metals to buy and how to buy them. Because if you remember from that gold performance video, I showed you exactly how gold is outperforming 2011 based on every single metric from opening price for the year to average closing price to price high for the year. But the truth is, and I don't want this to discourage anyone out there, and I'm going to get to why in a second, but the fact is that silver in 2023 is underperforming versus 2011 on every single metric. It is the complete opposite. That said, and getting into the main point of the video, why I don't want you to be discouraged is because of this. Take a look at what buying the average price of silver over 15 years would have gotten you. 
a 19% nominal return based on spot price. And we'll get into inflation adjusted numbers in a bit, as well as talk a little bit about premiums. But what I really want to point out here is that the 19% nominal return on the price of silver is not too far off the 37% we currently have for the average price of gold over the last 15 years, despite a very scary comparison versus 2011 metrics that I showed in the previous image. But this data also reveals silver's major difference versus gold, and that is its volatility. Because buying the high price of silver every year for the last 15 years would have yielded a negative 5% return, while buying the low price every year would have yielded a 48% return. Whereas the difference in returns on buying the highs and lows of gold are much closer to each other due to the relative stability of gold versus the price of silver. And I've added those numbers for gold at the bottom of this chart so you can easily compare them to silver as a reference. And from my point of view, this tells us something critical about purchasing silver. And that is it is much more important when you buy silver versus when you purchase gold. Getting excited and buying as the price of silver goes up will almost certainly leave you less than thrilled after a few years of buying silver, and the only person you really have to blame for that is yourself. But back to the main topic because we still have to see if silver is a hedge against inflation or not, and I'm showing you the numbers here, and if you want to check any of the numbers from this video yourself, they are all available on my Patreon. Joining my Patreon supports the channel and keeps me sponsor free, as well as gets you access to tons of bonus videos, stacking tools, as well as my newsletter, which I publish twice a month. So if you are interested in, join the, uh, in joining, the link to join is in the description as well as the pinned comment. But back to the numbers, and, and what those numbers tell us is this. If you bought the average price of silver over 15 years, you would be more or less in line with inflation with an adjusted return of negative 3% versus a return of negative 19% if you had held cash during that period of time. And considering the current outlook for silver, I fully expect that to turn positive near the end of the year as silver only needs to be at $26 to break even versus inflation over the last 15 years. But if you bought all the highs, well, I'm sorry, you are not as lucky as we were if you bought the high price of gold, which gave you a positive 1% return, if you remember from that gold video, on your investment inflation adjusted, because for silver, that's going to put you in a 23% hole with buying the low price every year yielding a 20% inflation-adjusted profit. But I know what you're saying right now. You're all saying, you're sitting there, you're yelling at the screen, and you're saying, but bald guy, show these numbers with the premiums we're paying. A lot of people asked about the premiums in the gold video, so I don't want to disappoint any of you. I did promise in the comments section that I would do it, and here it is. I added an additional calculation factoring in an average premium of 15% above spot over the last 15 years. Now, what you have to remember here is that premiums weren't quite what they are today, 15 years ago, and I personally think that no stacker should be paying much more than 20% premium on silver, and that's something you can note down now. What you need to do is you need to go bargain hunting because a lot of these dealers out there are getting comfortable with the fact that stackers are paying these really high premiums. And what we need to do is we need to do a better job of finding the dealers that are selling with lower premiums and reward them for not taking advantage of the average stacker. But that's a total side note. Coming back to the numbers with premium added, this is what the numbers tell us, that even including high premiums on silver, if you pick your spots well, you will come out ahead. But for those of you who are looking at the negative return on having bought the average price over the last 15 years, I do want to remind you of one thing and kind of say at least from, why from my perspective, it's not all that bad. And the reason is because I personally pay insurance on my home 
even though it's never burnt down. I have insurance on my life, even though I am pretty healthy. I also have insurance on my car, even though I am a safe driver. Now, when I'm looking at these premiums on silver or even gold, I simply treat these as the costs of being insured. And I've spent a pretty penny over the years to be able to sleep well at night, knowing that I'm safe in case, for example, my house catches on fire, or if the unthinkable happens, knock on wood, and I have an accident and die. I know that my family will be taken care of. And as I've said time and again, I'm not stacking silver or gold to become rich. I think that's become very evident in the numbers I've presented you in both this silver video as well as the gold video. But what I do stack for is to have an insurance policy against a situation like this. This chart is one that I showed back in my video about what really happens when poop hits the fan, when the financial system collapses, when things really get out of control, when the leaders of your country mismanage the money supply and trigger massive rates of inflation. Because th that, that's basically what I'm personally insuring myself against. A situation where today, Turkish people need 2.7 million Turkish lira to buy what 1 million Turkish lira would have bought them back in 2020. And as you can see here in this chart, for those people who held silver over that time period, that insurance policy paid out, even with a 15% premium added in there. And that is exactly why I stack silver and gold. And if an opportunity or need to use my silver and gold in another way presents itself, like buying a house in the next crash, like I discussed in another video, then it just shows that being prepared pays unexpected dividends and that it's better to have something and not need it than to need it and not have it. So to answer our questions from the beginning of the video, starting with, is silver really a hedge against inflation? And I think we've shown that it is somewhat, not as good as gold for sure, and that's why I always say to own both. Own gold for the stability and buy silver in the pullbacks to benefit when the price has a big run-up. But no matter how we break it down, even with a premium, it still performs better than cash. And I expect those numbers to look better as we approach the end of the year. The next question was, what if I buy only the price tops or only the price bottoms? What would be the difference in profit and performance? As I've demonstrated, buying into weakness is really key when buying silver. Stacking up on those big dips like many of us did when it was down around $17 per ounce last year was the right thing to do. And buying into big run-ups is a mistake. And I want all new stackers to remember that and try to practice a little patience when stacking. Don't get caught up in the excitement. This is a long-term insurance policy. And if you want to help in determining when silver is cheap, expensive, or somewhere in between, one of the tools I have on my Patreon helps you determine exactly that. Now on to our final question. What proof is there that silver will protect you in a financial collapse? And I think this is really the most important question that we needed to answer in this video. And I hear all kinds of opinions on this, but I don't deal in opinion or conjecture on this topic. I deal in facts. And the fact is that what happened in Turkey can happen anywhere. And that silver maintained its value versus the dying Turkish lira. And then some. And that's why, despite a lot of arguments that surround silver as to whether it makes sense to hold it or not, I stick with it. We do have a viewer question for this video, and please remember, for all of you watching out there, you can submit your questions in the comments section of this video. I read all the comments, and you never know, your question just might appear in the next video. This one comes from GS, and he was asking a question many of you asked linked to traveling with money. So if you are traveling to a country with more than $10,000 in cash or valuables, you are obligated to declare them to customs and they will have you fill out a declaration form and ask you a few questions before sending you on your way. They will not cuff you, but if you do fail to do this, 
they will confiscate what you have. And it will be a pain in the bum to get it back. And GS asks in his or her question, if traveling with sovereign Boolean coins that have face value on them is a way to get around having to declare these amounts at the border. For example, if you travel with 10 American Eagles, the face value is $500 because each one has a face value of $50, but the value based on the price of gold is $20,000. Can you avoid declaring using that little trick? So instead of making up an answer for this video, I decided that I should do a little research to deliver a proper answer to the community out there because again, as I said, a lot of you asked this question. And lo and behold, I found this answer from American Customs that clearly says gold coins valued over $10,000 must be declared. Full stop. Don't try to beat the system on this one, people. Declare your gold or simply don't travel with it. It's up to you at the end of the day. That's it for this video. I really appreciate you all watching it. If you liked it, please drop a like right now. That helps make a little bit of noise for the algorithm and get this video out to more people who need to hear the message. And until the next time we see each other, take care of yourselves and take care of each other. All the best. Goodbye.